Hey guys, what's up? Matt Cleese here from Loon Outdoors. Welcome to Loon Live. Hope you like the splash screen. My face looks hilarious. Um, anyways, um, we're back. It's working. Things are amazing. Happy comments, such, um, everything like that. So we're actually simulcasting now to YouTube. I'm um, just trying to spread out a little bit. Um, so give me a second here. I'm trying to figure out how that all works. But uh, at the end of the day, we're still going to be tying flies and we should be good to go. Let's see. The video is taking a hot second to upload right now, but that's about it. Um, all right. Cool. So tonight we are going to be tying the Dalai Lama. Now, we're going to be tying my version of a Dalai Lama which might vary from like the original um so we'll call it like the bollywood llama nate what's up man how's it going welcome to the live stream so here we go we have dolly llama and i'm going to show you guys two ways to tie it one is kind of the more traditional way um and then this is going to be the way i think is the easy way to tie it and we're also going to be tying the dirty dichomosis here which is a uh, cool October caddis pattern using some pretty snazzy new materials. Bob, hey, Aaron, ahoy, ahoy, buddy. What's up, man? Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, hope everybody's happy out there, staying cool. Um, let's see. So what we'll do is, hey, look, I figured something out. The people that, uh, pay me to uh, do this would be very happy. Um, give me one second here, I apologize. I gotta open up uh, some sort of chat function here just to see how it all works. Cool, cool. Awesome. Alright, so we have two chats going now. Bob having fun. Humid here in Yellowstone. Man, last week we had humidity too. And uh, I can I can tell you two things. I don't do well in heat. And I definitely don't do well with heat and humidity, so um, not my uh, not my hottest things in the world for me. Yellowstone sounds fun. I like it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump up close, and we're going to be tying Dolly llamas first. So hopefully everybody's okay with that. Got a new super trick. Oh, look at how buttery smooth. You can just manipulate. You notice I have the big game jaws and the regal tonight. Um, I am going to be using a little bit bigger hook. Um, then my stainless jaws seem to enjoy, although it's not too bad. I think I have like the black lung. I've been sick for two weeks, so if my I start like coughing or pretending like uh, if I sound horrible, I apologize. Um. So first up, we'll talk about what we're using here for the Dalai Lama. So we're going to do two Dalai Lama styled flies. Let's see here. So the hook I like right now is this eight, uh, Home Run 430 from Ahrex. Um, but if you guys have another stinger hook that's your favorite one of choice, by all means, feel free to use that. Um, so you can see I have the uh, the 430 pretty much pre-done here on the rabbit strip. Um, I'm all kinds of fancy. Oh, dude, you have no idea. I'm high fluting. I mean, I drink coffee with my pinkies out, Nate. I'm just saying. It's the kind of guy that I am. So I'm going to start with our Vivas. I was doing some thread tests on this. I always get, uh, I always get the uh, job of testing thread for some reason. So, I was abusing some thread. So really what I'm going to do, this is, just a, this is just a rabbit strip in black. These are actually magnum ones in here. Either that or they just got cut a little bit bigger than the rest of them. And what I do is I'm going to take about four inches off. Now, the Dalai Lama is one of those patterns. What up, Jonathan? How are you doing, man? Dalai Lama is one of those patterns that's like, I don't care what you're fishing for or where you're at. Um, if you're new to streamers or streamer fishing, it's probably one of the best ones to have in your box. They come in a rainbow assortment of colors. Um, 
And what I did there was just uh, taper cut the back of the rabbit strips. Carl, no audio. Fly time Thursday. Is your volume on? Does everybody have audio? Let's see. Cockpit air. <laughs> um, we'll leave you alone on that one, Carl. We'll let you slide. I won't harass you. I've seen enough harassment today in the fly fishing world. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of part this where I want my tail to start out. And right now all I'm doing is I lick my fingers and we kind of, you know, take back that mohawk. And I'm using the Vivas 50D. It allows me to seriously wrench down on these and, uh, you know, get it going out there. Let's see. <coughs> Excuse me. Jake, I've been doing well, man. Let's see, Aaron. Rabbit Peacock. I, Dude, I don't know, man. If they could do that. Rabbit Strip is one of my... It's just one of my materials. Like if I'm going steelheading, I love Rabbit Strips. I love bunny leeches. Um, you know, in every variation possible. So I just split it, you know, I just pulled it back again. So I'm doing two solid tie-in points. Some guys like to poke it through the hide. Um, I find that it just adds a ton of time. Kelsey, how's it going, man? <laughs> Good to go. Perfect, perfect. And I'm just going to come in here and whip finish. But if you looked at, like, any of my flies that have a ton of movement and like either for swing fishing or you know bank fishing streamer wise there's gonna be Dalai Lamas there's gonna be lots of stuff with rabbit strip um, rabbits just one of those materials that moves it does hold quite a bit of water which is some guys complaints about it but uh, there's a way to rectify that I gotta show you guys something new <laughs> I forgot it Forgot my forgot my new tchotchke toy. It's going well, Steve. Loud and clear. Ditto on the rabbit strips. Exactly. Um, so one thing I'm going to do here is I have some flow. Now I know you, a lot of you guys have been bugging me this year about flow. Well, since its inception, that the bottle's too small. Good news is two ounce bottles are here this year. So that's going to be coming to a you know fly shop near you now if I could uh, not leave the tip in the sunlight that'd be even better but we'll just cut it back just a hair so what I do is I'm just gonna give it a second and I'm gonna let it go ahead and bond in um, soaking into the rabbit hide creating a bond and there's this thing I'm kind of using here if you guys can see it it's kind of a fun new light. So this is our uh, new UV infinity light. Um, it's going to be popping out here soon. Um, battery indicator, green means your battery is good. Red, your battery needs some recharging because it's got a recharge feature on the side here. So uh, that should be fun. Um, so once you get that in there and the flow's kind of locked it all in place, you can kind of see that we're going to start taking shape. Oh goodness. If I don't knock stuff off, if you guys don't know, I work on like a one foot wide bench for this so I can have the cameras really close. So when I knock everything over, you guys can just laugh at me and heckle because I knock everything off the back of my bench, but it's the only way I can get the, the, uh, the camera to stay close enough so that it focuses really well. Alrighty. So once we have this all, pretty much locked in you can see the spots that we tied in they're going to kind of disappear and there's two ways to tie the Dalai Lama um, and I think they're both pretty solid ways um, one way is these cones and I'll show you guys the cone method although I'm still going to cheat because these new cones slip over the, the front of the head 
Um, historically, you had to, this cone that you had to put on first, and you had to work around it a bunch. But modern technology and advancements in cone diameters looks like all of our cones are going to be totally passable over most hook eyes, unless you guys are using some crazy monster hook eyes. So I'm going to give this about two inches of wiggle room back there. <laughs> and we'll go ahead and start locking this in. So it's kind of funny, I, I mean I used to always fish Dalai Lamas, but I got into tying them with my friend John. He's He's a fly fishing rep guy, kind of like myself, and uh, he, he was going to Russia a few years back, and apparently there was like a worldwide shortage of Dalai Lamas, so I just started tying them for him, and he went to Russia and did really well on this Dalai Lama variation that I tied using the flyman heads so well that he's asked me to tie him some more for his trip coming up in two weeks so what we do is we're just going to peg that in you can see we've kind of separated it and I'll move our thread forward I just like to do a few wraps right here and this is going to really get all kind of hidden away um, but the cool thing is is this fly as it stands right now, if you threw the cone head on there, like and it was a hot bead cone head or something like that, it'd be a killer steelhead pattern. You know, just a little bit of flash. And that would that would work all day as a great steelhead leech. So this pattern can actually be morphed into just a stack of different stuff. Jake, I don't know if I answered your question, because I'm on cold medicine, and I'm on cold medicine, but I've been okay. I think I've had the black lung, but my wife, who's a nurse, assures me that I just have a man cold, and uh, so I, I guess I just kind of have to go with that and accept her diagnosis of man cold. So, And sometimes your rabbit strips are kind of just a little bit wild, and it's okay. I mean, if they look willy-nilly like that throughout the uh, time process, you're going to be fine anyways. So what it is, you know, you can take a white. You can doll these up with any color that you really want as well. And that's just going to be our belly. You can give it a good stretch. It should stretch it out. So you're getting this nice, big, pulsating... Thing. Well, let's see. Shoot, bugger. Uh, oh, some people's comments are being cut off just a little bit. Let's see. Uh, Curtis says, let's see. We'll just go this. I am tying a cat right now, Curtis. Absolutely. Cat tying. So this is a uh, lateral scale saltwater flash, and we're going to use two pieces of this to create the Dalai Lama. And I just take one slice and put it in half so I can extend it back. And you guys can change the size of this, um, the colorways. You know, if you did this all olive with a sculpin helmet, you're just going to have a really money little sculpin pattern. It's a pretty simplistic tie at the end of the day. Hoping that this big countersunk cone thing will, yeah, we'll we'll slide her in there. So at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and whip finish this one. Lewis, hello, hello, and welcome. So I'm going to use my Loctite glue of the super style, and 
I'm just going to glue the potatoes out of this cone head because that's how we operate here. And I just kind of shove that thing back on there and let the let the zappa gap kind of do its thing or the the glue. Everything's zappa gap in my brain, so I apologize. And what I like to do is I'll just create a little thread dam up front here for this style. And once I feel like I've got a good, decent thread dam, I can whip finish again. You can add eyes. I think fish like to attack blind fish, so I don't go with the eyes. Um, just my personal findings. So you can always drop a little bit of flow in here just to kind of doll it up a bit. And that pretty much, once we trim this back, is just going to be your ultra traditional Dalai Lama. And I just trim those on a kind of just a little bit of a bias. Um, and you cut the sacrificial hook here. But at the end of the day, you're just going to have um, a pretty basic Dalai Lama pattern. What kind of a camera am I using? Um, it's like a little Canon handy cam, high definition type chip, lots of chips and snazzy stuff. So, now I'll show you guys the way I've been tying these Dalai Lamas and using the fish skulls I think it's pretty pretty quick and painless. So kind of a lot of the same steps. If the music is loud it's supposed to be on volume 4 which has always been acceptable but at this point I feel like it's pretty pretty loud. Um, so once we get here we'll go ahead and uh, I kinda pre-did this guy um, I was just going to rock that, but, and I'm using like a 65 pound braid, so, it's pretty stout, I don't think it's going to pop out ever on a fish, um, but I guess you could break it somehow, I've seen weirder things happen. So I just pass these through the eyes, and if you guys have like some saltwater hooks, or anything like that. Those work equally as well. I'm just using like these $79.99 steelhead irons because I bought way too many of them. Is my thread squeaking? Yes. My thread always squeaks. Um, so this guy's kind of wild as you can see. So you want to make sure that you get your tension right too. You don't want it to be too tight or too loose. I want to give it a little bit of wiggle room um, between the rabbit strip and the cordage. I kind of want it to be, even when the cord's tight, I want there to be a little bit of give so it's not pulling on this rabbit strip, personally. The thread squeak's just part of the show and the charm of Loon Live, Carl. It's uh, it's become a staple. We can't really get rid of it. We've act asked it to leave the program multiple times, but the squeak just keeps coming back. Uh, Frank has asked a great, great, great question. Um, so Frank's asked me if I've ever used Beetleon or like an intruder wire uh, for this application, and I don't. The only other thing that I'll use is like. GSP or um, fly line backing just because that the, the intruder wire kind of helps your, your hooks to stay real taut so it ride like this whereas this pattern I want it to articulate as much as possible um, and utilize as much of that for lack of better terms when rabbit gets wet it's just like a wet sock there's no it's just completely manipulatable by the by the current so it creates like this cool erratic action um, I kinda feel like wire in that scenario would definitely inhibit that 
So I'm just going to taper cut this belly fur again. And you can tie them, if you're tying them big, I like to use the Magnum rabbit strips from Hairline. Um, <coughs> but you guys can tie them super small and use like micro pulsator strips, um, which would be really fun. Probably make some fun smolt patterns and stuff like that. And all I'm doing is I'm just making sure my bottom rabbit won't catch on the back of my hook. So there's a fine balance there and it's something that you can always trim bigger or smaller. Right on, right on, Lewis. I appreciate you tuning in, man. I have a squeaky bobbin, so I'll apologize for that. And I won't, I don't change it. So we're going to do the same program again. We're going to use some of this uh, lateral scale. Um, the original ones just use a saltwater flashaboo. Um, I think the lateral scale just adds like a nice little uh, gesture of... Uh, like scale to the pattern as well. And I'll just trim those guys as well. Now, what I have here, and this is like an optional piece, these are some local, or local, loco legs. Um, I call them the curb feelers. So you don't have to add curb feelers but uh, it, it's pretty fun. Um, so I'll take about three, and these are like a psychedelic purple translucent color. Just match them up to your fly. And it's kind of a fun addition that you can do. It's not 100% necessary, um, but I think it just adds a cool, fun dimension into the pattern. They almost have, I don't know if you guys can see them, everything looks real bright and purple on my screen and on the other screen, but they have this really cool like iridescent trans like shimmer to them, almost like a ghost uh, paint job. So I kind of like that, I think it adds some cool realism into the pattern. Um, so again, we're just going to use Loct Loctite super glue and completely saturate, I mean just a hearty portion. Um, because with these flyman heads, I really want to make sure they get locked on there really good. And this one's like a pink purple color variation. And I just push it on there. It's going to be a real tight fit. But you can see you get a really cool mohawk effect on that going. Um, and I'll just add some eyes for this one because it has, because I happen to have the eyes. that fit this. I don't have eyes that fit those other cones. Well, I had eyes. Darn. Anybody else just lose eyes every time they open the bag of eyes? Or is that just me? Oh, it's stuck to my hand. There you go. Good job, Matt. So, what I'll do, just a drop of super glue. I don't care who makes the eyes, I always glue them in. Um, just you know, especially if I'm doing them for, uh, like, somebody's trip, a friend. just want to make sure they don't fall apart on them. Gangster. <laughs> and you don't want to glue your finger onto the fly. That's silliness. But at the end, once you're done gluing your finger to it, if you get any on there, you can just drop a little flow, um, and it'll clear up all those pupils. Just one eye. Alrighty. So yeah, that's kind of my uh, my my Holly or Bollywood Dalai Lama a little playful spin on it. Yes, odd numbered eyes are very good. It's perfect that way. So you kind of get these crazy rubber leg scenarios hanging out all over the place. Um, 
and this this HR 430 is a two tube hook for steelhead flies, but man, I can't get that thing to bend, and I've been trying. So, yeah, pretty slick little pattern, guys. Kind of a lot of meat to throw around. Okay. Alrighty, so I'm going to have to readjust here. We'll see. I'll see if I can't just get closer. And we'll enhance. Alright, so this guy is my October Caddis pattern. And uh, it's got a little crystal flash, some CDC, some wing buds. Um, it's using a product called Nymph Skin. Um, which is a really cool stretch material. Um, so it allows you to manipulate it really well, well, but it also has like a cool texture to it. If I hold it up next to the fly, you can see that it's, it's very textured and realistic. Um, so this fly has been really good for me. Um, in every size, October Caddis is obviously an easy one to see. Um, and, you know, coming up towards October Caddis time, uh, I figured I'd tie something big and fun anyways. So, probably the easiest way i found to cut this is with a razor knife, but uh, it's hard to see. I have a cool little knife that rolls along here with a razor. Um, I think it's made for soccer moms and like textile work, but I use it for cutting fly tying material. And I tie this in a uh, size 8, which you see here, and a size 6. Um, it's equally at home being fished traditionally as a nymph or swung on a, like a spay rod for steelhead. Let's see. Only. S Oh yeah, Tom, don't worry, I cut the second hook off that Dalai Lama, it's just there. But, uh, good to know. Yeah, you can always crimp the barb after the fact. <coughs> okay. So, I don't add a ton of weight to this fly. It does have a tungsten bead on there, and it is a mottled brown tungsten bead. And I just go back in to about the the barb of the hook, which seems to be enough. There we go. Uh, and the next thing we do, you guys will see, I just cut a small swatch of this material. And this is that Kylie's nymph skin kind of a tannish color. I believe it's just straight tan. <laughs> and what I'll do, thank you Lois, I appreciate it, um, is I put a little uh, taper on it and all I'll do is just apply some slight tension going backwards till we get to the, where the back of the fly is going to be. Which like I said is right at the, the barb point. Um, I feel that this material is translucent, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in some Ice Dub and Rusty Brown. Um, and I just get a hearty pinch of this Ice Dub Rusty Brown, and this is actually going to be an underbody material. So, one thing I think with my nymph patterns is I like to have like a base color um, that I can build off of. Um, I don't go with an orange, and I don't know why. I've just found that this rusty brown seems to really do well for me um, whoop, pardon me and I just go ahead and just build a body it starts to loosen up I'll put a couple more turns in it and I just create this kind of cool little underbody effect here it's going to add a little bit of translucence and sparkle. Tan, yes. <laughs> uh, what I'll do, 
This may seem counterintuitive for an underbody, but I'm going to pick it out just a little bit. And I just kind of want to catch some of that material and kind of let stuff just, whoop, don't let it go. It is stretchy. Um, I don't mind some of that dubbing kind of coming through. I actually think it adds, like I'll try to almost push some out. And if you go lighter on your wraps, it'll it'll be thicker, but you're just going to create this really cool body segmentation on there. And then once we get up front here, I'm going to go ahead and toss my thread around, and I really just start to wrench down, and I'll actually come back just a bit and really crank down on this pattern. So we get this really cool kind of, there's a little bit of translucence underneath, um, inside the potty there. So next up I'm just going to use just a slight bit more of our ice tub and rusty brown. Um, and I'm just going to create like a small little collar with this that we're going to use just to prop our wing buds on. And with this 50 with this 50 den denier thread, I don't freak out about extra wraps. Um, especially not with a pattern of this size. So, you can see I'll brush it out quite a bit. And then uh, I'm just going to get two hen saddle tips. And it can be an India hen, Brahma hen, whatever you guys have uh, you know, available to you in your arsenal of fly time. The Indian hen backs are really awesome. And they're great value for a tire. Great for legs on nymphs and and everything. So I'm going to put one out on the side there, and you can see that'll kind of become one of our little wing buds. And they're going to get compressed down when they're in the water. So if they seem really aggressive um, and over exaggerated, they kind of are on purpose. Um, once they get wet, and if you're swinging this fly, they're going to get compressed down quite a bit. <coughs> Thank you, Lewis. Appreciate it. If there's any scragglers, you know, kind of just running all over the place, I don't, I don't worry about those guys. So, next up, we're going to use some CDC, and if you have some ones that aren't good for, you know, dries, um, just some cheap. I call it like the beater CDC. It's just really not the prime stuff. It's never what I, it's always what I use for my nymphs. And what I'll do now is I'm going to take some uh, ice dub peacock black and some ice dub and chocolate brown and I just blend the two of these colors together so it's just a pinch of each and I'll just do a real quick hand blend um, I'd use like the, my, my dubbing board if I was going to do a lot more but hand blend is going to work really well in this scenario And I'm really just going to kind of palmer this CDC through, creating like a progressively moving forward collar. So you can see it gets a really cool look there. And 
and it's a really kind of a big buggy pattern. It's a little bit less dense than my other one, but uh, it all just depends on the CDC. So, just adding some more sparkle down low. Oops, get that guy off of there. I'm going to use some uh, crystal flash and a medium brown. And all I do is I cut a slit at the top of the bag here. Let's see if I can show you guys. So I can pull out one one fiber at a time. Um, and that's that's pretty much all you're going to need. And I just turn this into about eight legs. And I'm going to place these guys right in the front, in the middle here. And I just do a little sparkle leg section. Just adds a little flash underneath, aids in the overall look of the fly. Um, <clears throat> Next we're going to be using a uh, just a bronze mallard. I have a little bag of it back here. And these guys are just going to become our uh, our antenna. So I'm going to pull out two, if you guys can see that, of the bronze mallards. And all I do is I just lay them over the top. Just lightly put them in. I don't care where they go. I just want them to be bigger um, than the body of the fly. I want them to protrude back just a bit. And we're going to hide most of the stuff under the collar with just another small pinch of the UV ice dub in black. And the bobbin squeaks again. So we'll whip finish back up inside the bead. So we get nice strong bond there. Um, what I like to do is I'll just go ahead and throw some, some flow on the top here and kind of press everything backwards. So you, you kind of are pushing the top of the back of the fly back. Um, so everything's flowing backwards in that category. But all in all, you can see up here is where I've got all the flow piled in. Um, a little bit of flash, uneven legs, it's just there. So as you go through, you can see that little bit of glistening. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty fun little pattern. Kind of pop out and zoom out on it there just a bit. Well, there we go. Those are the uh, the two patterns I have for you guys tonight. I'm trying to see if I have uh, any of our any fishing line here, which does not look like I do. Bad, 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 bad. Thanks, Curtis. I appreciate it. Uh -huh. Yeah, all in all, um, you know, the next few months here, it's going to be really fun. Lots of October caddis and uh, steelhead fishing and stuff like that. Kind of looking forward to uh, getting rid of the uh, dog days of summer, if you will. Um, I've had enough 100 degree days. So, well, right on, guys. Um, it's a little bit shorter this evening than, than usual, but uh, that's the way it kind of goes. Dalai Lamas are not... Um, an incredibly tough, tough thing to uh, tie, um, but be sure to tie some and put them in your arsenal and do some uh, of the October caddis as well. Thanks, Frank. Um, next time around, I think I'm going to tie a musky fly. I've got a lot of requests for musky flies, and then uh, we'll probably do uh, maybe like a more traditional steelhead fly as well. Um, but uh, thanks, Lewis, Aaron. Thank you, buddy. Carl, thanks. Appreciate it. Bob, thank you. So, yeah, I appreciate you guys all tuning in, and uh, we'll catch you guys next time. All right, take care.